government has resorted to the Special Investigation Unit to investigate a number of corruption and fraud cases that have almost crippled public service in the province. Provincial Premier Pumulo Maswale says this is part of their hardline approach against fraud and corruption and their commitment to ensure that those in positions of authority are accountable. Maswale sat down with our assignment editor in the Eastern Cape, Tammy Dixon, to discuss their plans to fix some of the province's challenge, and this is part of what they discussed. On corruption, you, you made uh, <clears throat> quite, a, uh, quite a big announcement to say that uh, you signed a memorandum of understanding with the Special Investigating Unit um, to come to the province and deal with some of the uh, fraud and corruption uh, cases. The purpose of drawing in the uh, Special Investigation Unit it is a part of uh, intensifying uh, the fight against corruption uh, because uh, really it, it, it robs the people of the resources necessary to bring about change and better uh, the prospects of the province. We've seen a number of schools that have been closed down by parents because they're saying there are no teachers. How do you, how do you sort this out? Yeah. Let, let, let's, let's first say that uh, I, I wish we could find one another uh, uh, with the parents. Uh, that strategy is short-sighted because uh, in the long run, it's still the, the learners that are losers. Right. I don't dispute the fact that uh, there is not this problem of uh, adequate uh, teachers. We're not producing as much of maths and science teachers. Countrywide, it's a problem. And in fact, schools are beginning to poach from each other, maths and science educators, accounting, agricultural sciences, uh, it is a, a, a matter that I think in the final analysis we're going to address by the reopening of teacher training colleges. Uh, that uh, a, a program will help us produce more teachers in the areas of most need. The, the, the issue of political instability in some of these municipalities, I mean, some municipalities are, qu are quite viable municipalities, they're big municipalities. I mean, you've got Nelson Mandela Metropolitan, for instance, it's a massive uh, 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 municipality, but it's it's uh, uh, it's really under uh, the challenges of political instability. Uh, you yourselves, as the political leadership of the province, uh, including um, uh, the national leadership of the ruling party, had to intervene and uh, and disband the political structure in that in that municipality. To to really, uh, how are you going to get it right in, in terms of ensuring that uh, you nip in the bud? Uh, the political instability uh, in these municipalities. I could say that uh, we are on a really on a landscape now in which we're moving municipalities to be more focused, structured, and interactive with the communities, so that we can attend to the basic needs for people, services, and responsiveness on the part of the municipality. Right. These are things that uh, we are monitoring in Nelson Mandela. I could say that, uh, yes, uh, the, the sense of stability uh, uh, insofar as uh, turmoil, political turmoil in the area, uh, it's been uh, really, uh, since the beginning of the year, I would, say, I would say that that has since subsided. We're now focusing on making sure that council functions, it performs its duties, and it's also going to be a function of time, enhancing its effectiveness the outreach programs to interact with the community there. Right. I was there myself uh, bringing some of the local leaders, local councillors, yes. yes. in directly interacting with the concerns of the community there. Right, right. Premier, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate that you have allowed us to have this conversation. Thank you. With you. Thank you. We thank really you. appreciate it.